I'm Grace and I'm here with the last of our Women's History Month videos. As a reminder, you can just click the link in the bio for all of the books. Uh, it'll take you right to our website to check out or you can go to redwoodcity.org slash library. So these are my current must reads. Obviously this list changes a lot, but this is what you're getting right now and you should definitely read them all. I also need to use the iPad for a lot of these because a lot of them are brand new and checked out or as is the case with this first one, not even out yet. Get yourself on the list though. You can get it very quickly. So first we have Firekeeper's Daughter by Angeline Bowie. So, this one comes out on March 16th, and you should definitely get yourself on the holds list for it. I promise. So worth it. Our main character is half Ojibwe and doesn't feel like she fits in anywhere. But then she witnesses a very shocking murder and lands up smack dab in the middle of everything uh, and has to learn a lot about herself very, very quickly. Angeline is an enrolled member of the Salt St. Marie tribe of the Chippewa and former director of the Office of Indian Education with the U.S. Department of Education. So she really knows what she's talking about when it comes to Ojibwe experiences. And she's also a really excellent author and very nice. I got a chance to chat with her as well, and she was just lovely. So next we have <sighs> Last Night at the Telegraph Club, which just came out about a month ago by Melinda Lowe. Um, Melinda is not a local author. She lives in Boston, but this book does take place in San Francisco's Chinatown. So you're going to get a lot of local history with it as well. Our main character is a girl named Lily who discovers a lesbian club called the Telegraph Club and meets a very cute girl named Catherine. But it is 1954 and being a lesbian in 1954 is not great and being Chinese American as Lily is in 1954 is also not great. You're going to get a lot of really intense stuff when you read this book, but that's one of the reasons why it's so, so, so important. It's both queer history and Chinese American history and racist history of the U.S. The 1950s were notoriously awful in a lot of ways because of a senator named Joseph McCarthy. So you're going to get a lot of that as well, but you're also going to get a really beautiful love story between Lily and Catherine. And sometimes that's exactly what you need to read. Next, we have Good Girl's Guide to Murder by Holly Jackson. The sequel just came out. It's called Good Girl, Bad Blood. It is currently sitting on my to-be-read shelf, which is not really a shelf so much as like a giant pile. Um, it's a really fun mystery thriller. Our main character is Pip. And she decides that for her senior project in high school, she is going to solve a murder. Five years ago, when she was in middle school, a beautiful blonde girl disappeared and her boyfriend, a boy of color, died the following day by suicide. So everyone just believed that he killed her because obviously, right? Well, Pip has never believed that and she sets out to prove that he did not kill her and that something else happened to him. It is such a well-crafted mystery that it just keeps you sucked in the whole time. And I was actually surprised at how it ended in a couple of ways. So have fun with that and then get yourself the sequel. Next, I believe it is my last one on the iPad. Yes, it is, ha ha. We have also fairly new, a few months old at this point, The Inheritance Games by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. So if you have seen Knives Out and you enjoyed it, this is definitely the book for you. 
Also, if you're a fan of mysteries, specifically Karen McManus's books, I think you'll get a lot out of it. Our main character is Avery, and she is a very poor girl from the wrong side of the tracks in the middle of nowhere, Connecticut, who finds out that inexplicably, a Texas oil billionaire, billion with a B, has left his entire estate to her. She had never even heard of this guy. Let me tell you, his family, his two daughters and his four very attractive grandsons specifically, are real mad, as you can imagine. It doesn't end on a cliffhanger exactly, but I will say there is a sequel and you're gonna be real happy about that as well. Highly recommend, it's so much fun and it will just keep you guessing from first to last as well. So next we have Dancing at the Pity Party by Tyler Fetter. This is a graphic novel memoir about the death of Tyler's mom and all of the firsts that come after something like that. Um, it has a lot of humor in it, and I think those of us who've dealt with the death of a loved one might find it funnier than other people. But I think anyone can get something out of this book, and I just can't recommend it enough. Last but not least, we have one of my favorite YA authors. Her name is Ruta Sepetis, and though she grew up here in the States, she is of Lithuanian descent. So she has a lot of interesting ideas about the kinds of histories that people should be writing because you don't really hear a lot about what happened to the Lithuanians in World War II, do you? But you should because a lot did. Um, she, we have three of her books here. We have Fountains of Silence, Out of the Easy, and Salt to the Sea. And she has a fourth book called Between Shades of Grey or Ashes in the Snow, depending on which edition you get. When they made the film version of Between Shades of Grey, they changed the title to Ashes in the Snow. I think you can probably guess why. Um, Ruta is a Carnegie Medal winner and has been invited to speak at European Parliament and NATO. Um, Between Shades of Grey takes place in Lithuania and is about the Lithuanian experience in World War II. Out of the Easy takes place in 1950s New Orleans in the French Quarter. Salt to the Sea also takes place during World War II and it is about one of the worst maritime losses of life that has ever happened in recorded history, but we never learn about it because it didn't involve any English or French or Americans. But it's a thing. I mean, almost 10,000 people died. Can you believe? And Fountains of Silence is her latest book and it takes place in 1950s Spain. And we don't really learn about Spanish history in school because they kind of sat out World War II since they were dealing with their own dictator. So you're gonna learn a lot and these are definitely crossovers. All adults should be reading them as well. They can be kind of intense, obviously, but the way that Ruta writes, you don't even think about that until it's already over and you realize that, oh, I, I wept at that one line. Um, she is phenomenal and the books are phenomenal and I highly recommend them for anyone who wants to learn anything or anyone who just wants to read a really good Happy reading.